All right, let's get into it. Week one. Welcome to week one of a 12-week training program for Olympic distance triathlon. Let's just quickly review uh, where you need to be to really start this 12 week. And if you're not at one of these, uh, all of these three places for swim, bike, and run, then what we want you to do is to go back and to do the preseason training so that you can get up to these distances. And as always, uh, make sure that you clear with your medical professional doctor uh, that you are okay to do this type of strenuous exercise, this type of program, this type of training. So to start with, we want to make sure that uh, you can swim 500 yards without stopping, okay? If you're not there, go back in the preseason, work on your swimming. Uh, biking, want to make sure that you, at this point in time, can bike 20 miles without stopping. And for running, and I'll even say run slash walking, if your goal is just to finish the race, then as long as you can walk five miles. And on all of these things, uh, I want you to actually prove it to yourself. Don't actually, don't say to yourself, oh, I can totally run five miles, but you haven't run five miles, you know, in the last year. Go out and run five miles before starting this program to make sure that you can do it and make sure you can do it without being incredibly sore and you can, you know, then go and work out the next day. Okay, so real quickly, those are where we need to be to start. Um, another mention, uh, click the downloads. There's a download, uh, there's, a, there's a PDF for the whole 12 weeks, and then there's a second PDF for just week one and week two. So let's get into week one, and, and a quick reminder that as you move forward in your training, consistency needs to be one of the key things that you think about. The more you can be consistent in your workouts, the better your race is gonna go. Okay, and then the second thing is understanding the importance of workouts. When you look at week one and when you look at the whole 12 weeks, not every workout has the same amount of importance. There's, there are certainly key workouts throughout the season, and we'll get into this week, what are the key workouts for this week. And you wanna make sure you hit those key workouts. So to start with, if you're looking at this week, the key workout is a brick workout, it's a bike run workout, and that's listed on Saturday. So let's say your schedule is you know, different, maybe you have a type of schedule where Tuesday happens to be your day off, and knowing that this is the key workout and knowing that Saturday and maybe Sunday are not days you can work out, you need to move around the schedule so that you can pull this key workout into your best day, which in this example is Tuesday, and then you need to change around the rest of the workouts because you wanna make sure you get in this key workout. So if you only did one workout the whole week, that's the workout you want to do. And you'll see that I have on there, I, I gave three different possibilities. So we can do a 15 mile bike ride followed by a three mile run, a 20 mile bike ride followed by a four mile run, or a 25 mile bike ride followed by a five mile run. And as, as you know, that's darn close to the race distance. The race you know, would be 6.2 miles, but that would be the bike distance. A uh, quick note, for any of you that have the opportunity to swim beforehand, you could add a 20 minute swim beforehand. Um, but what we need it to be is where you hop on the bike and ride right after coming out of the water, not taking a 15, 20, 30 minute break. Um, and then also being able to go for a run. And what I found is it's, it's much easier to find a starting location even, so for some people it's their house, but other people they, they have to drive to an area where they can go on a, on a safe bike ride um, and then come back and go on a safe run as well from that area. And that's for most people that's not always their house. And so when you try to combine those elements of a place that you would you know, go cycling from and then running from, that's not always from a pool location or if you're, if you're doing this in a warm environment or it's not always from like an open water environment where you can just do a swim, bike, and run. If you have that ability, great, add a 20 minute swim. Okay, notes on the bike run. So when you're out there biking, I want you to bike a little bit harder than you will in the race. And the reason for that is what typically happens is people tend to, the adrenaline gets going and they get in the race and they, they ride harder than they do in training. And then what happens when they get on the run in the race is they don't have a very good run, they maybe have a lot of uh, buildup in their legs and really fatigued and, they, and they're not really sure what happened. So to correct that, bike harder in these trainings. So when you're out there and you think about, okay, how does this feel? Does this feel like how I'm going to approach the race? 
and then just ratchet it up a notch. Because you want this run to be hard so that when you get to the race, that the race run actually feels a bit easier. So push yourself in training. And when you get on the run, I really want you to know, uh, pay attention to your pace. Does your pace slow down in the last mile, two miles compared to the first mile? You know, did you go out too fast? Are you able to do this run? And a great way to do it is to do an out and back. So if you're doing four miles, you go out two miles, turn around and come straight back. Can you do it in what's called the negative split? Can you run faster in the second half of the run than the first half of the run? You're up, a couple of things you're gonna find out here. One is how hard you bike directly impacts your ability to run. So if you have a really bad run, you can maybe look at your bike and say, did I bike too hard? And on your next brick workout, you can then adjust that and bike a little bit easier, whether you're using you know, a power meter, whether you're using perceived exertion, whether you're using your speed. Um, if possible, you also want to pick a bike and a, a run course that mimic the triathlon you're doing. If you're doing a race that's a very hilly bike ride and you have the ability to do a hilly bike ride on the training, oh, excellent, it's not always the case. Same for running. Um, a couple other notes. With these brick workouts, you want to treat it like a practice for race day. So as much as possible, you know, if the race starts at 7 a.m. and you're going to get up at 4.30 to eat your breakfast so it'll, you know, digest and you start the race, try to do that. Um, it's not always convenient, but think about if you're staying at a hotel for the race, what kind of foods are you going to have available at your hotel? So what kind of foods are you going to have available to you race morning? Eat those foods in these brick workout so you can see how your stomach handles that and then you can make adjustments within these 12 weeks so that your race goes best as possible. Also treat these as a nutrition and hydration practice. So if you're going to be racing in a hot environment and you know you're going to go through two bottles on your bike of uh, you know hydration, then do your best and, and you know if you're it depends on how far you're going obviously if you're doing 25 miles that's race day if you're doing 15 miles, then even though you do two bottles of nutrition hydration on the bike, in a 15 mile bike ride, you're probably only gonna get through one bottle. But on this training, get through that one bottle. So practice your hydration. How often are you gonna take a drink? How many calories are you gonna take per hour? What form are those calories gonna come in? Are they gonna come in goos or blocks or solid foods? Um, can you eat and drink on the bike? These are times to practice that. And then a big one is once the workout's over, it could be an hour later, it could be that night, it could be the next day, but just go through and make some general notes. How did your breakfast feel? How did you feel biking? What was the temperature? Was it windy? You know, did you do a good job with your nutrition and your hydration? How did that impact you on the run? The, the more notes you make, the next time we do a brick workout, you can go back and reference those notes because it will help you set up that next workout so you can, you can adjust some of the things that didn't go perfectly in your last one. The more you do this, then when it comes to race day, you're gonna have a better race. Okay, so let's talk about the other second level key workout. So again, this is key workout number one. So the, really there's one for swim, bike, and run. And in your particular case, um, you may be a fantastic swimmer. Maybe you came from a you know, Division I college swim background. And so if you're looking at these two, and, and that's the case, you know, the, the run and the bike are going to be more critical for you because you have a really strong swim background. If you're a marathoner um, and you run all the time and you run really well, then you know, maybe the, the run workout, if you could only get in two of these three workouts, Maybe the run workout is the least one that you need to work on, right? So everybody's a little bit different. So what I have written down here is what I call the main set. This is the, the, the work part of the workout. I'm not going to talk about the warm up and cool down, but make sure you do the warm up and cool down, you know, within this workout. Uh, for, so for swimming, it's the main, the main set is three by 300 yards. If you have a meter pool, that's fine. Three by 300 meters. Um, you're going to take a 30 second rest interval. If you're using meters, you can tack on an extra 10 seconds and do 40 seconds rest interval. So I want you to swim this at your threshold. So what does that mean? So think about the pace that you're going to go out and swim in your race 
and be at that pace if maybe not just a tiny bit faster. So you wanna be thinking about pushing yourself. How hard can you swim that you know 1,500 meters in the race? What does that feel like in practice? Really start to pay attention to that perceived exertion and work on pushing yourself in these uh, 300s, okay? So the run workout, I have it on Tuesday. It's four by five minutes mixed threshold. And what that means is uh, this week, you're gonna do the first four minutes are gonna be somewhere between 10K to half marathon pace as far as effort goes. And then the last minute is gonna be 5K. So that should be hard. And then you're gonna take a 90 second walk break. And then you're gonna start over on the next uh, interval. You're gonna do 30 seconds just getting going running again. And then four minutes, 10K to half marathon pace, a minute 5K pace. On the bike workout on Wednesday, it's uh, we're working on building strength. So five by six minute segments, and the details are in the workout. You really want low cadence because we're thinking about strength building. So think about using your glutes and pushing, getting good uh, rhythm, pulling up on the bottom of the pedal. You know, so developing that leg strength in the bike so it's very specific so that you become a stronger cyclist. Now, how do you modify it? Well, let's say your, your goal, you say, you know, coach, my only goal is to finish this race. Great. You can take all of this out and you can just go by duration. So if these are all one hour workouts and your goal is simply to finish, you can ignore this and just think about, okay, I just want to run, walk for an hour. I want to bike for an hour because your whole thing is you're building your duration. But if you're, if you're a bit more advanced than that, that's why I have these in here. You can also mix the days up. They don't have, the swim doesn't have to be on Monday. You know, maybe your schedule, you have Tuesday off and you can stack two of these on Tuesday and then you take Monday as a workout. You can switch them around, okay? So for this week and week one, if you just did these three workouts and the key brick workout, you would have a fantastic race. If you have more time and you have more energy and enthusiasm to do the whole schedule for the week, fantastic. You're gonna get much closer to setting your very best Olympic distance time because you're getting in more workouts. But more is not always better, so always make sure you're listening to your body. That's a key component. Other notes, uh, Thursday, I have that as a flex day. So what does that mean? Well, if you one of these swim, bike, run is more of a limiter, maybe that's a day when you add a third workout on that day. It's also a chance to, based on your life schedule, take one of these workouts and move it to Thursday. Um, and then on Friday, it's a rest day. If, if you're a person that doesn't really like to take a lot of rest and maybe you're taking a rest on Sunday, you might wanna put in your distance swim workout, which is an easier, lower effort workout. Uh, on Sunday, it could be a rest day, it could be a recovery swim day, you know, to help you recover from this brick workout. If that doesn't tire you out too much and you feel good and you want to take Thursday um, or Friday off, you can move the distance swim to Sunday. So those are all options. So I'm just giving you guys ideas about how you can take the schedule and make it fit your lifestyle so you can get in, especially the key workout and then the second level key workouts. Um, as always in the comments, leave me a comment if you have a question let me know because by posting that comment, I guarantee you there's somebody else that's gonna learn from the question that you asked. All right, uh, thanks a lot. Let's get after it in week one.